Hey there everyone, Lord Fidget here with another episode of Aether Raid's Offense. This video covers the recently completed Astra season. I had a relatively smooth season myself, though uh, it seems to become a have become a worrying trend where I'll just drop the first match of the last day, which is blech. I, I think one thing I need to do is actually just drop trying to play Aether Raids at midnight, because that's just not a good idea. Uh, in this case, I forgot that Saros is C passive, does the things it does, and poor Marita couldn't handle a max investment or Seer as a result, so that was unfortunate. I think there was actually a way I could have pulled out a victory, just not with the strategy I ended up employing. In any case, that's in the past now, so let's go ahead and get into today's matches. The first map is a box-style infantry pulse setup. There is a bit of a rally element with her seer carrying rally speed def, but it's not really a rally trap. If she does need to rally either Duma or Ike, she's just going to do it from right where she is. She doesn't have any warp power, so she can't jump out in front of a Gren. So really, the only thing that that rally does is it just eats Sylvia's refresh, which is quite unfortunate for this map. I would say the biggest weakness is the fact that Ygren is the team's hardy bearing user, so it's quite easy to just bait her out from one of these two locations. And once you've taken care of that, as long as uh, none of your units are threatening or threatened by the rest of the enemies, Kagero actually moves next before Thersira does any sort of rallying. And she'll get Sylvia's refresh. Of course, the only space she can move to is the one that was recently vacated by Agren. She'll attack your unit as well. So if you can get uh, a good vantage user like Altina to uh, take that hit from a Gren, which is easier said than done, but it is possible, then you can pretty easily pick off the ranged units and the melees will kind of have to worm their way around that uh, huge block of structures that the map designers stuck in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the lower, lower, lower section. So that is my analysis here. Let's just go ahead and get right into my approach. I'm going to go ahead and send in the Dragon Wagon team for this, uh, for this battle. If Altina had not been able to survive a hit from that Agren with this team, I probably would have needed to deploy the Claude Raiding Party. Fortunately, she does have enough investment and support to pull off a uh, to pull off tanking Agren here. So I will go ahead and let her do that. Just take a couple turns to get set up, break the Aether structures before I get things going. And I think I actually, since I am taking this extra time to set up, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and break this this bolt tower. I It opens up the opportunity for the enemies to come down through the middle, but I think I'll be able to, I think I'll be able to manage. So let's see here. I can go ahead and uh, move Altina. I want to make sure I can get my dragons over to, to uh, respond to the enemy's advance, but after that, I should be able to just move Altina here, get a refresh for buffs, and then I can smite Alt Plumeria to left or right. I'm thinking right here, just to have her closer to be able to support support the uh, the uh, my units as the enemies start to advance. So I'm expecting a 33 out of a Gren. Exactly. Calculate her to defense correctly. Thank goodness. And then Twin Blades activation will finish her off. Then Kagero moves next because uh, she has no assist and Pasir does not have any r eligible rally targets. She'll mitigate half of Altina's first attack, but take full damage from the second. She'll go down as well. And then let's take a look. Okay. All right, there was a reposition there. Interesting. So the Thersir does not have hardy bearing because, well, because the Igren had it. Let me go ahead and uh, get get uh, Sothis into a position to take the hit from Thersir. The reason I want to do that is... Um, is that I want to preserve Altina's Twin Blaze just in case I need it for Ike. And there, now there's every possibility that uh, Idun will be able to, to handle that. Just always nice to have another tool ready in the arsenal. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if this is indeed able to land a one-hit KO on the Seer, even without her serious activation. That Luna might hurt a little bit, but... Uh, oh, wow, it put her below half HP. Oh, well, I guess I guess uh, Duma's upheaval helped as well there. Um, but yeah, so no real trouble. We'll actually have to see how the enemies choose to move. Okay, so Ike gets the refresh and he attacks into Idun. Of course, that is a very, very much a losing matchup for him. He doesn't, he doesn't die, but it's, it's, uh, it's not a fair exchange by any means. Oh, he has lunge. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and have Regan take out the Ike here, and then I need to check 
the Sylvia's stat line. Just make sure, because I would like to place Altina in her range, since there is uh, the water tile over on the left-hand side that is in Selvia's range, but not in Duma's range. It would be trust. really nice to be able to uh, to pick eyes. her off, and then just deal with Duma on the next turn. So let me go ahead this and do way. that. What is your desire? And then just the end turn button. Sylvia should go down to the two hits from Altina. Oh wow, she doesn't even even if she uh, even if she didn't go down, she doesn't even she doesn't even uh, deal any damage. So that's that would have been fine. Interesting. And then Iduna should be able to finish off the Duma with that Aether activation to end the map. The second map up is a uh, Winter Bernadetta and Return setup. With the ground origin on the Byleth, obviously the idea is for Sarah to jump out in front of Ophelia and use Return on her, kind of chuck her towards the enemies, and then her range is extended. Though not by much, I will note. She, the range extension really only increases her range out to here, which is not particularly significant. Then, of course, uh, Sarah eats Mirabellus' refresh. At that point, I do believe Sarah will use return on someone else, whether it's Mirabellus herself or possibly even Bernadetta, though I don't think that's particularly effective. Um, basically, you're really only going to have to deal with the Ophelia on the, uh, on the first on the first turn, and that's that's not exactly difficult. I would hope that everybody has at least one unit who can deal with Ophelia at this point in uh, in the game's lifetime. Uh, after that, the rest of the enemies will advance. If you don't break any of the structures at the bottom, then only the ranged units will advance, which makes it even easier to split the, uh, split the enemies up and just do divide-and-conquer style strategies. So overall, I would say that... The key to this map is just having a unit that can tank the Ophelia, and then you should just be good to respond to how the enemy chooses to move. One of my favorite things to do against an Aether 8's defense map is to identify what its strategy is, and then just shut it down before it even has a chance to get going. That's what I'm going to do here with the Gale Force team. I will use Tibarn to reposition Regan over the mountain. Then she will be able to take out the Ophelia with a quick 2 H KO that activates her Gale Force. Interestingly enough, she actually is able to one-hit KO the Byleth, which I thought was I pretty this. interesting, especially given... I mean, I mean, her defenses are garbage, but I would have thought that uh, the plus 15 HP for 3 Mythics would have at least done something. She's able to Kanto away now, and then I will refresh her immediately Close with uh, Primaria. Then have Fjorm break this armory? Yes, armory. So Regan can escape, and I can place Altina in range of Bernadetta. Even without Asherah's Chosen active, uh, she doesn't need the attack boost to, to uh, punch through Bernadetta's garbage defenses, and uh, she doesn't need defense to survive because Bernadetta hits Rez. Uh, the rest of the enemies should advance. Saros does have her action since I did uh, delete some of the enemies. Let's see here. Oh, interesting. Mirabilis is uh, isolated again. I do think I want to take her out, though. I would much prefer to not have to worry about trying to predict where she's going anymore. So let's go ahead and have Tibarn take her down. Then I can go ahead and take a look at some of these matchups and see uh, see what there is to see, really. Let's take a look-see. Uh, oh, wow. Really? He two hits Saros through the Dragon Wall? That's... That's gotta be full mitigation. Tibon's res is horrible. Where's the loot? His res is even worse than Bernadette's defense, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, obviously I don't want to do that just yet because then he'd be in range of Duma, who will destroy him. So let's go ahead and just retreat for now. I don't think I like Altina's chances of taking a hit from the Sarah, so let me just go ahead and give a heal to Plumeria, see how the enemies choose to move. Okay, so let's take a look here. So, if this is real, then no big deal. Altina can just get a refresh and uh, take out the Sarah. Anyway, let me just take a look at some of this stuff. I, I'm still actually running into the same issue with the Duma. I don't want to have to deal with him. Uh, can Altina... Actually, wait. Can Altina delete the Saros? I have doubts, but you never really know. Okay, wow. She is actually able to do that. That's pretty neat. 
So that's that's uh, that's basically how my how my strategy is gonna go. Then I'm going to have uh, Altina take out the Saros, reposition Altina to safety. I'm pretty sure the Twin Blades activation would take out the Duma, but I don't want him down just yet. I still want to grab those other structures. So I'll have Regan take out the Saros. She can then Canto up towards the uh, Aether M4. I, I do believe Duma is still going down, maybe down right. Okay, he's going down right. That's fine. Uh, actually, I should be able to just grab them both now. So, yes, yeah, she has, still has Kanto up, and then I can do a refresh. Gets penalties on the man. And then just... Uh, actually, Tiburon could probably do this on his own. I'm pretty sure his guaranteed follow-up attack would let, let him punch through the uh, Fell Breath effect. But just in case, couldn't hurt to get that extra chip in. And that is it. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Aether Raid's Offense. I thought it was pretty interesting seeing those uh, initial seven unit defense teams. It'll be pretty cool to see how those evolve as the uh, as time goes on. Uh, next week we'll be going into light and dark season. I'm also very interested to see how they handle the mythics for light and dark, whether they do uh, one or the other first, or if they maybe do something like what they did with Freya and Triandra, where they just release uh, one of each at the same time. That'd be, that's, that'll be interesting to see what happens when, uh, when March comes around. At any rate, that is all I have for you this week. So, as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.